Right, this, this uh, track rod end is from an SN95 Mustang, um, 1995 Mustang, and it should have a taper here which fits the taper on the oh, and we jam it in. Yeah, it fits. Renault racking kit. So we've got inner tie rod from Renault McGann. And Renault McGann is a, a sort of nine, late 90s, uh, I think 2000s um, kind of compact people carrier, European. So there's the inner, let's see there's a ball joint there. This fits fine, so that's good, there's plenty of adjustment. The last part then is will that go into the Porsche early Porsche steering rack. Right, well the good news is my Porsche steering rack, early Porsche steering rack's come and it seems to be not complete junk, it seems to be in good condition. I can turn it easily. There's no slop, it doesn't bind and it's not a rusty wreck. Even the rubber here looks pretty good. Um, the other good bit of news is the dimensions, I've measured everything up, the dimensions once it's all bolted together will be correct. The only uh, downside is, as you know from before, this fits, this fits into here, this is from the Renault Megan. Um, this is slightly too small thread, but the good news is there is room enough to make an adapter. This here is M14 by 1.5 and this is M16 female by 1.5 so I got a local engineering company I know to make me two of these adapters so you can see that will fit there and then this the M16 side this is M14 M16 will go into there so here I've just loosely assembled it so this is bang in the center and I propped it up so that this is this is reasonably straight. Um, rack is in the middle. The length here is the same the length here. So there's the adapter. This is the Renault McGann inner tie rod. Um, Ford Mustang 1995 track rod end. Bolts. Just loose, I haven't fully tightened it. Bolts up through there. And you can see this is sticking up sort of in the midpoint. So we're not steering left or right. We've got some adjustment either way here available so pretty pleased with that I think that uh, that's going to work I was just worried a bit then as to whether the uh, there would be any conflict with these rods but uh, if I just push this one loosely in here you can see it'll all be okay I think right so here I've just mocked up the suspensions this is the Porsche early Porsche 911 or 912 steering rack um, so this telescopes in and out here here's the adapter I've made uh, Renault Megane inner track rods uh, 95 Ford Mustang track rod ends and these are screwed in nearly all the way um, there's about that much thread on these so in fact my wheels are um, towing out just a touch but that's not a problem because as I said there's about two inches of travel or more there um, unused so in fact the geometry of this in terms of the lengths is perfectly okay I just got this off eBay because they're really cheap um, and the compact it's a Vox, Volkswagen Polo from about 2000 and I don't know three or four or something steering rack um, they're really low priced on eBay I assume because there's more of them than people that need them but you've got a big universal joint here and look at this, it's telescopic, so you can make it fit your car easily. There's another joint there. Um, this is all quite slim. Um, this great big lever here, if you clunk it around that way, the column moves in and out. Now, obviously that's not period correct, but actually I might just, you know, if I did do this, I would enclose it in um, some nicely made aluminium. Um, and here I could probably just have a great big nut that you lock with a spanner. Right here I'm just mocking up my 
steering rack. Um, yeah, basically these these here will be just level with the body holes when the body's on. The body will come around something like this when you're going straight ahead. Um, so basically, when you've got when you've got your weight in the car, basically when I sit on the front of the car, um, I want this to be reading level. So they're in a kind of neutral position when the car's loaded up. So if you go over a bump, it'll they'll go a bit like that. If you go bounce, sort of fly through the air, they'll go a little bit like that. It's good that the suspension is quite stiff um, and there isn't much travel. Obviously, if these, as you went up and down, if these go to too great an angle, they're going to pull the wheel in and then out again. So you want them to minimise that as much as possible. Today's job is to get the steering uh, geometry right and get it into the front of the car. Um, I spent a lot of time yesterday making this. This will bolt up underneath the uh, chassis rails, which will coming in across here. Well, they'll clamp up and then they'll be well. It'll be welded in, and it's a funny shape. You can see here's the steering rack. Down there is our mounting point. Remove that. See, this is a there's a bolt hole there and a bolt hole there, and because I measured everything the other day, um, I've had to make this rather strange shaped thing. Um, so you can see, we've got these here. So basically, there'll be a hole drilled here and here, just exactly the right place. I can reach it from the back to put the bolt through and tighten the bolt. Um, but it's welded in on all four sides, each one of these is, so it's super strong. I also had, which is a pain in the neck to do, to notch this. So basically, it's pretty crude. I, I cut this, this and this with the uh, disc cutter and then welded in a piece of thinner steel here that had been just trimmed to shape. So, right, you can see it's all wedged and propped and jammed into place at the minute. Okay, so the next thing I've got to do is check, put the tie rods back in here and just see if they're roughly parallel with the ground. Look what just came in the post. Don't need to use a freezer bag anymore. It's the uh, oil breather. Will it fit? Yeah, yeah, it will. Woo, there we are. How's that? So what I was doing there was um, was welding end caps on here and here. Is this going to bolt up under the front of the car so um, I don't want this tube filling up with salty sand and then sitting there all winter rusting away um, it's best to just stop it getting in in the first place I'm going to talk quickly about welding helmets um, when I started out I had a small MIG welder and I used to use a helmet like this. These are about £40 or $40. Sometimes you can pick them up even cheaper. And they dim, they get dimmer um, according to how bright the arc is. And also they're like solar powered. And there's control here. You can adjust how, how sort of dim they get um, when the arc is running. Now, again, you kind of learn these things by experience, but Half the time, especially when it gets all scratched up, you can't actually see what you're doing, which is a bit of a problem. It's not going to help your welding. So, um, when I sort of upgraded my welder, um, I bought a better quality helmet. Now, this one is uh, fairly expensive. It's one of the best value for money of the kind of, you know, good ones, if you like. 
um, semi-professional. The difference is you get a much bigger area of view and also I wear reading glasses so um, you know I can, I can use it with reading glasses to be fair I could the other one as well. Um, the other thing I've got here is a thing called a cheetah lens you see it's it's slid in and down between these two tabs. Now um, they seem to be more a thing in America than in the UK. It's 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 this basically a two times magnifier lens. I use something like that um, when I'm soldering and doing electronics as well. And um, basically, I got the correct width, but I had to actually file it thinner at the edges so it would fit into this slot system. I think the company that make this helmet do their own cheetah lens but it's mega expensive compared to the ones you can get on eBay so this is an eBay one that's been modified slightly that makes a huge difference for me um, also you've got various controls here um, and you can replace the glass on the front and everything this whole unit comes out um, the other thing is it runs I think it has a hearing aid battery in it or something uh, like coin cell um, the other thing is, now I've got this, it's like night and day, the, the visibility and ability to see what you're doing is just massively better. And um, I look after it carefully, I never grind uh, with sparks flying at it, I never put it with the glass down on the table. In fact, I, I put it in the other room in my workshop when I'm actually doing any grinding or anything like that. So yeah, it was fairly pricey, I'm looking after it and um, it makes a massive massive difference it's really useful we've got a functional steering system well I've got bad news and good news the bad news is I thought I'd just check with the Vintage Hot Rod Association whether it will be alright to have a, a small narrow steering rack tucked in under there not sticking out past the body um, because most of the car has to be in the spirit of the uh, way cars were built at the time and their answer was no you can't have a steering rack it was nothing to do with the possibility of um, a bump steer which is where when this wheel goes up over a bump that that um, track wad will move up an angle and so it will pull it in slightly um, my argument was because the rack is narrow these rods are relatively long so that effect is reduced also the spring travel is only about an inch so I can't see compared to all the other things wibbly wobbling around like these um, that um, it would make an awful lot of difference actually in the real world but there you go it, they didn't care about that their argument was they didn't have steering racks back in the day um, so no you can't have one it's got to be a steering box so what I'm going to do is um, fit, I'm resisting the temptation to, to put the wheels on back to front, i.e. with these parts sticking forward, which is what they used to do in some, not all, of the belly tank racers. Because um, I suspect it'll, see these are at an angle, there, it's just going to bugger up the uh, steering geometry completely. Not that it probably matters because you're mainly going in a straight line. But um, I've got room here to put a, um, a tie rod right across from here to the other side with about this, about this much clearance under this rail, which is way more than the suspension travel. Um, then put a steering box here with a pitman arm working like that. And then coming out to a steering, um, what's the word? I can't remember. Basically, it's a thing that bolts on here, and that comes out here, and um, you have a ball joint here, and, and a rod that runs across to the pitman arm, um, and then you join the two wheels together by keeping the um, tie rod that runs all the way across to the other side, under the front. So that's the plan. So it's tempting to just hack all this off, but I may leave it for now because actually at some point I'm going to have some tubes running up here to form a kind of floor under where your legs are and it may be that they will weld up to these points here so I'm just going to leave it not do anything hasty and um, work on my steering box system instead 
and then take this off at the last minute. So what was the good news? That was the bad news. The good news is Jimmeron made a cross section here. This is a cross section here. This is an adapter for from the end of the gearbox to the input of the um, differential. And if you're putting it on a lathe, I worked out that's the kind of cross section. This hasn't been printed to scale. That's actual size. Um, that's kind of a cross section of what you need to make in a lathe. So da -da -da, look at this. There we are. Made for me by a local engineering company. I thought it was going to be aluminium, but actually it turns out it's in steel. But um, the price was right, so I'm not complaining. So that is that's just like car porn, isn't it? Really, <laughs> or is it metal porn? I'm not quite sure. But you can see I need to mark where the holes need to be drilled, and then I'll take it back and he'll drill them. So basically, this will go. This end will go there. And we'll just check it all fits. See there, and then this end will go there, on right into the gearbox. And there should be enough room inside for this universal joint to go around without smashing into everything. If I've measured everything correctly, which is why I brought it home to, to check everything before the holes get drilled. <laughs> 